In Houston, Reverend ordered to pay $2.45 million to a woman that a jury found he gave herpes to. Tonight, that woman's lawyer is speaking only to our Devin Clark, who's live outside the courthouse where the judgment was granted just this morning. Devin. Keith Daniela, that attorney we spoke to, says it was a three-day trial with six and a half hours of deliberations. And after that, a jury found Reverend Ralph D. West the second liable and ordered that hefty judgment. Right, they can't fix it. She's got it for the rest of her life. Attorney Sean Murphy is speaking for his client, who a jury found contracted genital herpes from Reverend Ralph D. West II after meeting off Facebook. As seen here on the Church Without Walls website, he's listed as the Eldridge Campus Minister. Sylvester Ofori was very subdued and quiet while facing a judge this afternoon. He's accused of murdering his wife, Barbara Tommy, as she went to work at Navy Federal Credit Union on Tuesday morning. Prosecutors telling the judge today the killing was caught on video. Video surveillance, which shows Mr. Ofori not only shoot his wife, but then stand over her body and put additional rounds into her head. Afori is pastor of this church, Floodgates of Heaven, on Coburn Avenue in Orlando. Afori is pastor of this church, Floodgates of Heaven, on Coburn Avenue in Orlando. Afori is pastor of this church, Floodgates of Heaven, on Coburn Avenue in Orlando. ...of a Thanksgiving triple homicide. My wife heard some strange noise here. Like, she was like, what is that noise? You know, and then... And then it was a gunshot pow. Mike Brown stepped outside his home to find his friend and neighbor in police custody. I walked over into the neighbor's yard, and, you know, it was, it was like, like, is that two bodies laying on the ground? Because they had him on the ground. And he was, you know, right there beside the guy, I guess he had shot. One male subject on the ground, he's got two gunshots in the stomach. Police found 36-year-old Andrew Butthorn. We have two uh, females down in the kitchen. Inside, no Butthorn's 30-year-old girlfriend, Candace Kuntz, and her mother, Jeanette Gaddis, shot and killed at the home they all shared. Got a Chris Gaddis on scene. He's requesting PD. With Jeanette's husband, Christopher Gaddis, who turned himself in and is charged with their murders. The deacon here at Grace Lutheran Church confirms that Gaddis was a full-time youth pastor here. He describes him as an excellent man and says... He's in disbelief. Area pastor, I want you to take a look because you may recognize this man who we reported is accused of raping and stabbing his neighbor, then pouring bug spray down her throat. Release dash cam video shows officers pulling a squad car below a second floor window and rescuing two people as the flames spread. The pastor lived in the house with his wife, two daughters, and two extended family members. Police say what started as a tragic fire quickly became a criminal investigation. A lot of questions. Friends and neighbors are full of questions. If you look at it, you know, it's, it's devastating because you think, what could have happened and how could this have happened just to, you know, the three of them. Who may have set the fire? Police confirming that investigators are looking into the pastor's own Facebook posts. About three weeks ago, he changed his cover photo to this. We all have secrets. And then at 3.57 a.m. Thursday, he posted a vague message referring to this difficult time in my life and ended with the words, good night, y'all. Exactly 33 minutes later, police got the first report of the fire. The investigation now focusing on what happened in those minutes before the fire and trying to answer the difficult questions, who and why. Well, Chris, according to the medical examiner's report that was released today, the pastor who lived inside of this home, Eugene Cahey, died as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Excuse me. His wife and two daughters, however, died. They have ruled their death as homicide. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shab, Bahashim Recha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, your fellow believers of this faith, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, I just want to touch, um, going into a video yesterday on the Christians. I decided to go again on the Christians today. Um, kind of going into how um, they call he being Hebrew Israelism dangerous. Because the uh, acts of what the Lord says has happened 
and what is going to happen. So we're considered dangerous. Now, we say that Christianity is dangerous because the root of Christianity was thievery, bloodshed, replacement theology, lying, deception, taking books out of the Bible, just doing all kinds of crazy, horrendous, horrendous acts, um, transatlantic slave trade, all this, the conversion of um, uh, so-called blacks to Christianity. And also the important part is the Christians don't follow, don't believe in laws. Right now, we know the law can't save you, but they don't even believe in law. They're just lawless. And when you're lawless, you don't fear the Lord. And that's the problem with the Christians, right? They don't fear the Heavenly Father. There's no fear. All the only thing they have is praise breaks, right? And 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 marching praise breaks and rocking side to side in the pews. And maybe they might have. Uh, worship at their house and, all, and the only thing they talk about is prosperity well you know that came from during a time of slavery all you have to do is believe and you could be saved how convenient that was to tell a so called black man that was uh, not following uh, their doctrine right and uh, another part of it is if you wasn't saved you were killed this is why the terminology goes around are you saved in the Lord Right, meaning under your massa, are you saved? Do you believe in this Jesus? And then they put this corrupt image of Jesus on us and then told us, don't worry about it. And now that the truth is coming out, they're saying that it doesn't matter what he looked like. But for, for hundreds of years, they embedded that into our brain and we believe that. And when we follow that and we believe that, then everything that comes with him is wicked. If the root of it is a lie, then everything is a lie, right? So this is the mindset we were supposed to follow somebody who, who we can't even identify with. That's the sick part. And another sick part, is a whole lot of sickness to it, is that when these pastors, they commit these horrendous acts, these atrocities on their own families, and then they pull the trigger, and this man said, good night, y'all, Right? They'll, they'll chalk it up to mental health. Now they're going to some uh, different genre. They can't be wicked. You don't hear any Christian say, oh, there's just some wicked behavior. But they'll call us wicked for standing up against the crimes and the sicknesses that's going on in the society today. That's what you call hypocrites. And a hypocrite means liar. Right? Let's go to um, Mark 13 and 21. And then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, says here Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. Now all the scriptures that talk about the prophecy, Matthew 10, 34, he is not to come peace on the earth but a sword, or 10, 32, or something like that. Then he goes on to say, I have come to set a man against his home, his household, Right? These are all prophecies. And why is this happening to these Christians? Well, Proverbs, I'm just quoting some scriptures. Proverbs 20 and 24 says, man's goings of the Lord. So did not the Lord kill this pastor? So why did the Lord kill this pastor? Right? It's always judgment. That's why the Lord killed that pastor. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel. This is like one of my favorites, I think. Most of the brothers in my camp know this because I always pull this out. Uh, let's go to, uh, what is it, Samuel? 1 Samuel 2, you know, 2 and 7. It says, the 2 and 6, the Lord killeth and maketh alive. This is also in Deuteronomy. This is the prayer of Hannah, right? Uh, the Lord killeth and maketh alive, right? He bringeth down to the grave and he bringeth up. So the Lord is doing it. So why are the Lord killing these wicked pastors? Why and, and then they're killing the whole family. So that means everybody received judgment. But you know what the Christians will say? It was Satan. Satan, he, he lost control to Satan. He didn't follow God. 
See, it's more wickedness and madness. This is why those Christians are losing. They start, and then now we're causing them to change their doctrine. You know? Let's get another one to prove that. Right? These Christians say, I've chosen, you chose not to be with the Lord. That's what happened. You can't, look, man, you can't make that decision. Only the Lord can do that for you. You either are the elect or you're not. Now Christians are talking about the elect for whatever reason. So this is crazy. Now and I hear the Christians, which is, was it K-Dub or one of them? Not K-Dub. Um, Ron, Ron Campbell. Now he's talking about uh, God created evil too. So now it's like they constantly learn from us. John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. This is what the Lord saying. But these Christians will tell you, nope, we've decided, I woke up one morning and decided I chose the Lord. And the Christians will come and say, have you chose the Lord to be your Lord and uh, personal savior? Like there's no works that come with it. They don't believe in works either. Right? They'll read the letters of Paul. Let's read an example. But James 2 said, faith without works is dead. But the Christians don't believe in that. They don't believe in works. They don't understand the complexity, right, of what it takes to be in a relationship. You can't have a woman or vice versa, and they say, you know, I do love you, but you do nothing to show that you love that person. Anyway, let's go to um, Romans 4. Romans 4 and 15. Let's see what it says. Um, 14. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Right? And the promise is made to none effect. Because what Paul was trying to do is bring is, is show them it was bigger than the law. This is about faith. Yahweh shot the one you call Jesus is came to bridge us back to the Father because we were using the law and doing things in the law that was wicked. You could follow, it's like you could follow laws but did not be righteous, claiming to be following them, like you see people doing today, just changing everything, even other Israelite groups. The new moon is the, the now the dark moon, you know, just crazy things, you know? Therefore, faith, what it say? It says, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, right? To the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, right? Because they was really boasting in uh, Father Abraham. When you read uh, John ninth chapter, when he, I think it was John fourth chapter, I think ninth chapter, um, or eighth chapter, when he went into the synagogues and he said, "You're not of Father Abraham." He said, "Before Abraham was, I was," and they called him the devil. So we see here, this was the situation where they was going more boasting in the laws, right? But what did Yahusha say? He said, think I'm not, I'm not to come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. And he hadn't fulfilled everything. There's, to fulfill means to finish. He's coming back. So clearly he hasn't finished everything. But anyway, right here it says, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith. And this is what he's saying. Right? Let me show you. Let's go to Romans 6. Romans 6 and 11. Like, uh, let me say, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. You know, you got to understand what Paul was dealing with. This is why he's saying, uh, basically, this is the exact, when you look at the story of Yahweh, the one you call Jesus, right? When he healed the blind man on the Sabbath day, they were so uh, stuck on self-preservation 
that they've gotten away from the Heavenly Father. And the second greatest commandment was to love your, um, your neighbor as yourself. That was the second greatest commandment. And they used the law to do away with the second greatest commandment. Right? And it was all about the law. And, it, and the law became business. Right? But the Lord said, it's bigger than that. It's by faith and grace. And what do you need grace for? Because there were certain people who couldn't do the things according to the law. So this is why we need grace, especially today. So when it goes on, it says, what then shall we sin? Because And what is sin? Transgression of the law. What then shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. So again, to the Israelites who said, we can keep the whole law, that is foolish. That's why we have, that's why you have the word grace. And these people, you have Israelites who took in the law and done out of, done away with grace. Then you have Christians who just completely done away with law. And everybody needs a law. That's thing called order. And that's why you see these pastors, they have no fear of the Lord. And the Lord puts that angel on them and kills them. The deaf angel kills them. Because they never really believed. And I and I believe there's some sincere Christians who, who may really do believe, but they have to wake up and find out the truth. There's much required when you believe. You just can't do what the hell you want to do. Eat what you want to eat. There's a reason why the Lord didn't feed the multitude, right? Swine. And he, the reason why he put the spirits in the swine and drowned them. There's a reason why he gave them fish and not crabs and oyster. He didn't die just so it was all done away with. Now you can eat what the hell you want. Did he say be followers of me? So be faithful unto death as Revelation 2 and 10 say. Means you have to follow him to the best you can. If he thought that, would he have not according to the time when he healed the blind man and the lame man would he and, and, and when he uh, fed the multitude, would he have not cut up some swine and ate it and say, look, this is for you to eat? And some of them would go to the shambles. That was still all clean food. They were just making sacrifices over it. Anyway, this, again, this is dangerous Christianity, man. Romans 3 and um, 14. Uh, uh, 15 their feet are swift to shed blood destruction and misery are in their ways and they they and, and the way of peace have not they have not known there is no fear of God before their eyes and this is really going into our people you know um, let me go on here um let me go here. Everyone who makes practices of sinning also practice lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. First John 3 and 4. Right? Sin is lawlessness. Let me go into the regular translation. Let's see what it says. Yeah, this is what I quoted earlier. Whosoever commit of sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. I like the other version because it said exactly what it was is lawlessness you know everyone who commits this is the whole man everyone who commits sin also breaks the law sin is breaking the law and you'll hear the Christians say uh, you're not supposed to sin but then they'll do the T.D. Jakes and said uh, all have fallen short of the glory and they don't even do the research to know what was Paul was talk what Paul was talking about and what was going on in that time in that situation all have for because the Pharisees again boasting in the law, right? And basically, every all of them has sinned. Basically, even the ones that converted, they still sin, and some of those sins may have been punishable to death. And this is why Paul was saying, This is about the mercy, this is why you need to follow the Messiah, Yahweh, as they call Jesus, to bring you back as he covers that. But that don't mean keep sinning. 
But that's what the Christian church do. Everybody gets out of church, right, and go do the same goddamn thing, man. Right? The next Saturday or next Sunday, they're in the club or they smoking or doing whatever, weed or whatever else they got going on. The whole point is uh, clean up your own house. There's a lot of cleaning to do in these Christian churches. The thieves, um, embezzlers, extortioners, murderers, you know, clear deception, right? There's all kinds of things going on in the Christian church, but vocab and the street apologists, their whole job is just to focus on Hebrew Israelites. They can even fly over to the Holy Land. They're spitting on Christians, but no, nothing there either. It's interesting to see what his take will be on that. Anyway, that's all I have on it. And I'll say this, there, there's some Christians because, you know, myself and maybe some other brothers doing videos like this, now I'm starting to see Christians uh, post up and so-called defend the gospel. You know why they're doing that? Because of us. They never did that. Go back 10 years. You would never see a Christian, uh, not that I knew of anyway, there might have been some, who would say this is not right, we need to rebuke the church. You never seen it. Still, the Israelites came up, now they got to get up on their game and follow what the Bible say. And we're seeing they didn't like it. Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom.